This is Twit. Okay, so we're going to talk about um, what what uh, Matthew Green, his take on Telegram. Matthew wrote, this blog is reserved for more serious things, right? And like he's normally talking about the details of subtle problems found in in you know post quantum hashing algorithms and things i mean you know matthew isn't bothering to talk about you know abuse of commercial messaging he, that's he's kind of the king of cryptographers from johns hopkins i mean this guy is very yeah. very he's the guy if he says it i believe it i guess is the bottom he line. knows what he's talking about he knows what yes. he's talking about it yeah so he says, this blog is reserved for more serious things, and ordinarily I, ordinarily, I wouldn't spend time on questions like the above, because his blog is titled, Is Telegram an Encrypted App? He says, but as much as I'd like to spend my time writing about exciting topics, sometimes the world requires a bit of what Brad DeLong calls intellectual garbage pickup, namely correcting wrong or mostly wrong ideas that spread unchecked across the internet. This post is inspired by the recent and concerning news that Telegram CEO Pavel Durov has been arrested by French authorities for its failure to sufficiently moderate content. While I don't know the details, the use of criminal charges to coerce social media companies is a pretty worrying escalation, and I hope there's more to the story. But this arrest is not what I want to talk about today. What I do want to talk about is one specific detail of the reporting, specifically the fact that nearly every news report about the arrest refers to Telegram as an, quote, encrypted messaging app, unquote. This phrase, Matthew writes, drives me nuts because in a very limited technical sense, it's not wrong. Yet in every sense that matters, it fundamentally misrepresents what Telegram is and how it works in practice. And this misrepresentation is bad for both journalists and particularly for Telegram's users, many of whom could be badly hurt as a result. So, does Telegram have encryption or doesn't it? Many systems use encryption, he writes, in some way or another. However, when we talk about encryption in the context of modern private messaging services, the word typically has a very specific meaning. It refers to the use of default end-to-end -end encryption to protect users' message content. When used in an industry standard way, this feature ensures that every message will be encrypted using encryption keys that are only known to the communicating parties and not to the service provider. From your perspective as a user, an encrypted messenger ensures that each time you start a conversation, your messages will only be readable by the folks you intend to speak with. If the operator of a messaging service tries to review the content of your messages, all they'll see is useless encrypted junk. That same guarantee holds for anyone who might hack into the, into the provider's servers, and also, for better or for worse, to law enforcement agencies that serve providers with a subpoena. Telegram clearly fails to meet this stronger definition for a simple reason. It does not end-to-end -end encrypt conversations by default. If you want to use end-to-end -end encryption in Telegram, you must manually activate an optional end-to-end -end encryption feature called Secret Chats for every single private conversation you want to have. The feature is explicitly not turned on for the vast majority of conversations and is only available for one-on-one -on -one conversations and never for group chats with more than two people in them. 
as a kind of weird bonus, he says, activating end-to-end encryption in Telegram is oddly difficult for non-expert users to actually do. For one thing, the button that activates Telegram's encryption feature is not visible from the main conversation pane or from the home screen. To find it in the iOS app, he says, I had to click at least four times, once to access the user's profile, once to make a hidden menu pop up showing me the options, and a final time to confirm that I wanted to use encryption. And even after this, I was not able to actually have an encrypted conversation since secret chats only works if your conversation partner happens to be online when you do this. Overall, he writes, this is quite different from the experience of starting a new encrypted chat in an industry standard modern messaging application, which simply requires you to open a new chat window. Okay, now, I need to interrupt for a moment to clarify and explain something that's probably not clear. There's a world of difference between a messaging app providing true end-to-end encryption and merely having encrypted communications. Matthew doesn't bother to draw attention to this distinction because he lives in the world of encryption where the phrase end-to-end encryption has a very specific meaning, but it's easy to miss this important distinction. The reason iMessage imposes a 32-member limit on group messaging, which I mentioned earlier, and Signal and WhatsApp both impose around 1K limits, is that these services, with Ma- which Matthew describes as industry standard modern messaging applications, are all actually encrypting every party's message end-to-end individually to every other party. Telegram is incapable of doing this ever. It has no ability to do this under any circumstances. So while it's true that Telegram's individual connections are always encrypted, it's only when two and only two parties are simultaneously online and Telegram's users opt to enable end-to-end encryption for that single, that, that, that two-party dialogue that any truly unobservable conversation ever takes place over Telegram. All larger group chats are being decrypted by Telegram's servers for re-encryption and sending to other Telegram users. Remember that Matt mentioned like th- that industry standard mo- modern messaging applications never get the keys that are being used by end users to exchange messages. Telegram has all of the keys. So obviously this is a crucial distinction. Okay, returning to Matthew's explanation, he says, while it may seem like I'm being picky, the difference in adoption between default end-to-end encryption and this experience, that is going, you know, having to do four clicks and digging down in hidden menus and turning it on only when the other guy is online, he says, is likely very significant. The practical impact is that the vast majority of one-on-one Telegram conversations and literally every single group chat are visible on Telegram's servers, which can see and record the content of all messages sent between users. That may or may not be a problem for every Telegram user, but it's certainly not something we'd advertise as particularly well-encrypted. 
He said, Perens, if you're interested in the details, as well as a little bit of further criticism of Telegram's actual encryption protocols, I'll get into what we know about that further below. He says, so, does default encryption really matter? Maybe yes, maybe no. There are two different ways to think about this. One is that Telegram's lack of default encryption is just fine for many people. The reality is that many users don't choose Telegram for encrypted private messaging at all. For plenty of people, Telegram is used more like a social media network than a private messenger. And by the way, when we talked about this ages ago, that was exactly the conclusion we came to, Right, was that Telegram is is encrypted enough or is not encrypted at all, but that's good enough. I think that was actually the phrase you said, good enough messaging. Right. Yeah. And right. So people, as long as you know that and they don't advertise otherwise, that's fine. But unfortunately, they imply that it is encrypted. Yes. And and even to the point where Pavel, I don't think I have it in the show notes, but Pavel has actively attacked Signal and WhatsApp. Oh, yeah. Deriding their encryption. He says, oh, the government has back doors into those guys. Well, the government doesn't need a back door at Signal. (laughs) Jeez Louise. Yeah. Hey. So um, he said, um, uh, Telegram also support. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. He, 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 he was talking about how they use it as a social media plat- uh, network yeah. more than a private messenger. Right. And he said, getting more specific, Telegram has two popular features that makes it ideal for this use case. One of those is the ability to create and subscribe to channels each of which works like a broadcast network where one person or a small number of people can push content out to millions of readers. When you're broadcasting messages to thousands of strangers in public, maintaining the secrecy of your chat content isn't important. No. And he says, Telegram also supports large group chats that can include thousands of users. These groups can be made open for the general public to join, or they can be set up as as invite only. He said, while I've never personally wanted to share a group chat with thousands of people, I'm told that many people enjoy this feature. In the large and public instantiation, it also doesn't really matter that Telegram group chats are unencrypted. After all, who cares about confidentiality if you're talking in the public square? He says, but Telegram is not limited to just those features, and many users who join for them will also do other things. Imagine you're in a public square having a group conversation. In that setting, there may be no expectation of strong privacy, and so end-to-end encryption doesn't really matter to you. But let's say that you and five friends step out of the square to have a side conversation. Does that conversation deserve strong privacy? It doesn't really matter what you want because Telegram won't provide it, at least not with encryption that protects you from sharing your content with Telegram's servers. Similarly, Imagine you use Telegram for its social media-like features, meaning that you mainly consume content rather than producing it. But one day, your friend, who also uses Telegram for similar reasons, notices you're on the platform and decides she wants to send you a private message. Are you concerned about privacy now? And are you each going to manually turn on the secret chat feature? even though it requires four explicit clicks through hidden menus, and even though it will prevent you from communicating immediately if one of you is offline. My strong suspicion, he writes, is that many people who join Telegram for its social media features also end up using it to communicate privately. And I think Telegram knows this and tends to advertise itself as a secure messenger and talk about the platform's encryption features precisely because they know it makes people feel more comfortable. But in practice, I also suspect that very few of those users are actually using Telegram's encryption. Many of those users may not even realize they have to turn encryption on manually and think they're already using it. And this brings me to my next point. 
Telegram knows its encryption is difficult to turn on, and they continue to promote their product as a secure messenger. Telegram's encryption has been subject to heavy criticism since at least 2016 and possibly possibly earlier for many of the reasons I outlined in this post. In fact, Many of these criticisms were made by experts, including myself, in years-old conversations with Pavel Durov on Twitter. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Security Now. If you want the whole show, you can get it at our website, twit.tv slash SN. Of course, you can subscribe to Security Now on your favorite podcast, or just click one of the links below. Security Now.